hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about an external drive but not just any external drive I want to talk about this this is the G drive mobile this is their pro SSD for external Thunderbolt use it takes advantage of the blistering speeds of Thunderbolt 3 right now over USB type C I should say and it utilizes NVMe level storage the result is you have got a drive here that although it arrives at a modest 1tb it can provide performance speeds they report at up to 2800 megabytes per second which is blisteringly insane um, i'm going to be doing an unboxing with this today and i've got a follow-up video coming soon where we're going to put this through its paces on black magic and aja as well as utilizing it in conjunction with a thunderbolt nas that over there is the tvsh 1288X with its own dedicated Thunderbolt port and USB-C port as well. We're going to be factoring this into a multi-stage backup strategy with that when that comes along. But before we go any further, let me talk a little about this drive. Now, the reason I bought this drive, like a lot of equipment I have here on the channel, I get it out of necessity, whether it's for YouTube or a bunch of stuff that I write. I have gone through, over the years, different kinds of backup storage. So, before we talk about this, let's talk about this pile of beauties over here. Now, some of these you may have already seen on the channel before. We can go back real far to simple USB sticks. These would have been ones that I carry in the little pocket of my jeans to do an extra layer of backup when I was on the fly. Obviously, I used a NAS, as is this channel's want. But standard USB drive here gave me... Not a fantastic speed, probably talking somewhere between 50 and 100 megs if I was lucky, depending on the class. Then I moved up a grade. I moved into the likes of traditional hard drives external. This is a WD Passport. This is where my storage requirements got a bit bigger. And this took advantage of standard USB 3. It was known at the time, but obviously these days known as USB 3.2 Gen 1, 5 gigs per second. And this gave me, I don't know, 150, 160 megabytes per second if I was lucky. And again, that did the job. That was knocking around about a terabyte. Now, for those that follow, um, late last year, we were talking about this. This was an IO safe drive here, and this was one of their rugged protected drives. And this was because I found myself traveling a lot around the country, and it found, you know, outside of the UK as well. And I needed a drive that could take a whack. In fact, when I uh, surpassed this drive, I, this drive was sent through a lot of performance damage testing. Um, this wasn't the same drive that I used, I should add. This was one that was supplied for those performance benchmarks where we smashed the living hell out of it. And this gave us a terabyte of storage. But again, very ungainly, large power consumption as well. From there, I moved on to this. This is my little sand disk. This is my tiny little external drive. And this is currently the one that is utilized for a lot of my Plex videos and videos that I utilize for VMs. It houses all of the VMs and all the images that we use for the Plex tests and it's connected to each one of the Plex, uh, sorry, each one of the network attached storage devices we use here on the channel and it allows us to make sure all of the files are exactly the same and allows us to create image backups of those VMs. As good as this drive is, it got migrated away from my backup drive which brings us to this. This drive here is the bee's knees. I've looked at a lot of Thunderbolt drives over the last year or so. And it has to be said that although the price is not, um, you know, the lowest because you are paying a premium for NVMe and you're paying for a five-year warranty drive, you are also paying for a drive that can not only take a hell of a whack in terms of damage, but it can also give you a hell of a whack as far as speed. Uh, arriving, um, starting at 250 quid, for a 500 gig drive and moving up to 1 TB and 2 TB at 500 pounds and 1,000 pounds, give or take, including tax respectively. This drive here is designed for you content creators. It's designed for people that do photo shoots on the go and it's designed for those of you that need not only speed, but you need storage and protection as well. Those are three very key pillars of post-production and definitely someone who needs a drive that can do something that all of these provide in a single drive here. Now, we're going to do the unboxing today and then we're going to do the performance benchmarks, as I say, with AJA, Blackmagic and another video where we sync it up with a NAS. But for now, let's see what we get for our money in this. Um, we open up the box then again. Retail box there, you're going to find it on the shelf for your local IT shop very easily. Open up the plastic lid. And there we have the drive straight into there, rubberized coating on there. And again, it can't be removed. 
Uh, if we have all the way a look around, make sure the light doesn't ruin it. We've got that nice blue metallic sheen inside there. Let's bring that nice and close without the light going crazy. And again, at the top, we have a USB Type-C Thunderbolt connection. We have connected this over USB-C on a Windows environment, and it was seen, but then it was limited to USB 3.1 Gen, uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2. And we've got an LED light there at the base for when the drive is in operation. Now, again, these little vents at the top here is because this has an NVMe SSD inside. That means this drive, when it's in operation, is not going to make any noise and low, low power consumption, but it is going to get hot. So inside is a, a nice mesh system of heat sinks just inside there. Now, the drive from G, uh, uh, the G drive from G Technology, let's get that name right there, is designed to be fantastically rugged. Now, we've already talked about performance, we've already talked um, about storage, but in terms of its rugged capabilities, it can withstand a three meter drop. It can withstand up to a thousand pounds of crush test. It is waterproof to a degree, but we won't be doing a submergence test on this anytime soon because I will need it for some videos. But it's definitely uh, water resistant. Whether it can survive full dunkage, we'll have to double check on that. But again, this is a drive that is designed for 4K utilization. It's a drive that is designed for 8K utilization. And I don't just mean watching, I mean live editing thanks to thousands of megs of throughput on this drive. And they wouldn't stick a five-year warranty on it unless they meant that. Now, the SSD inside is almost certainly going to be that five-year warranty, but the outside does have a nice rugged feel to it um, all the way through. And it is a very good drive, a well-constructed drive, a nice bit of brand marketing enterprise work from them. Okay, so here we are on the desktop of my Windows PC here. The drive has appeared right there, and it's worth highlighting that when you do get this drive for yourself for the first time, it does arrive with formatting tools and a bunch of other um, um, EXE files on the drive that allow you to format the system to your needs. I formatted this um, for visibility in a Windows environment, but if you're a Mac user, all of that will be included too. It's all set up, and I've got the full storage available. So let's get things kickstarted with the AJA performance test. And with AJA, we're going to go ahead, select the drive. There it is down there. And we're going to go for a nice small file this time. We're going to go for a 256 megabyte file. So that's a quarter of a gig. And this test is going to be conducted continuous read write operations. It's going to be a single file test. And it's going to be taking advantage, uh, not taking advantage of caching, I should say. And it's read and write performance. So let's go ahead prepare the screen and fire straight into our performance testing bash so straight away at that smaller file size we're already seeing 17 1800 megs per second right and well over 2000 read now had we restructured the file system we might well have hit the reported 2800 megabytes per second at this file size do bear in mind a lot of those performance comparisons are based on users who are you know utilizing ideal scenarios there but these are still fantastic readings then you've got the benchmarks at the bottom and i forgot to mention we are testing 1080p but later on we will be looking at larger file density so i'm going to stop that file there and again move into one gig testing one gig takes a little bit longer to build that file but immediately we're still seeing a consistent 1800 right pretty much across the board and well in excess of 2100 read on the one gig 1080p file testing there across both of them in AJA. Next, we're gonna make our way into the larger sizes of four gig. And again, constantly hitting that 18, slight dips into 16 there as the test persists, but still getting that read in excess of 2100, almost completely throughout the test. Tiny little dip there towards the end. We'll do one more rotation, and then we're gonna move into uh, the largest file type that we can test in AJA 16 gig 1080p test file. This is the one that's going to take the longest time. We're burning 16 gig test, uh, um, an AJA test file there onto the drive, an enormous drive there. And again, you can see there very consistent right there throughout the test as it goes through each block there. 
And again, Reed still sitting lovely and high at 2,100 there. We're going to do one more rotation of each. And then after that, we're going to move into some much, much bigger file sizes before we make our way into Black Magic. So again, the right there. Definitely seen a dip there, if you can see there, on the right capture. And I think that might come down to my system. We should really have the task manager on screen throughout the course of this test. And of course, screen recording will also play its part too. Definitely opening that test there did harm the performance there during the course of it, while the drive, my internal drive, was being accessed. And you can see there that happened during that access point there. We're going to let that last rotation finish there. Still very, very good speeds there. And we can make our way onto the side of the screen there where we're able to see a lot of those performance benchmarks. Next up, we're moving into 4K testing. We're looking at a 4K RED 2160p 1 gig file. And we're going to keep the benchmark there on screen. It's also worth highlighting. I know it says SanDisk Stream Pro, even though this is a GTEC drive. Uh, that is because the SSD inside is a SanDisk Extreme Pro drive. It's the one here on WD's own website there to give you some idea about what's inside this system and what's on the drive. You can scroll down, find out more about the specifications as well with regard to the controller and the layers of the NAND. But let's make our way back into the performance testing and proceed from there. So straight away at the 4K, we are hitting... 2000 or thereabouts right every single rotation with read surpassing 2200 with every single rotation at one gig very straightforward there let's get the benchmarks down the bottom of the screen just showing us uh, the frames there and we can go ahead and stop that and move into the bigger file size going into four gig again we're seeing that slow down there and you have to remember with a lot of these tests that what you're seeing is and uh, the file being written gradually over time, hence the fluctuation of that read-write due to the density of the file. You can see on the left-hand side of the screen there a lot of the activity on the drive and the utilization throughout the course of these tests. And it's interesting to sometimes look at the CPU and memory and how much my system is doing some of the work. The GPU as well, thanks to the screen recording, is also making its mark. We'll let that read rotation finish, and next we'll move into the 16 gig and as you can see a new tab has appeared as well due to the 4k limitation to look at an even bigger file type so we're going to do two rotations of the 16 gig bench test here and again some lovely speeds there we're going to see the inevitable drop off as the performance finishes uh, the write cycle and indeed the read as the file size gets bigger and more complex and there's more to be dealing with with the uh, NAND controller on the SSD handling a lot of that activity but you can see we're using 100% utilization of that drive there and the way it's being drawn onto the disk there is making those performance dips throughout being very present so we're going to let that next read rotation finish and then we're going to move into the 64 gig testing cycle there I'm going to stop that there and now we're going to go into that 64 and again it's going to be a slow one, so we're only going to do one rotation of this. But this is writing a 64 gigabyte file onto this NVMe. Now, as mentioned, that write speed is going to dip quite dramatically as this performance goes through. Because that's what happens. You must have written files to an external drive before. That consistent speed, depending on the size and the complexity of the file, will result in that dip as time wears on what you need to look at is the benchmarks at the bottom those frame captures at the bottom and uh, the frame playback in other words the read but this is still a 64 gigabyte file being written remarkably quickly um, if we carry on hopefully towards the end here we're going to get uh, an even higher performance on read but you're still going to see that dip regardless uh, read is always going to be consistently higher than write and these are still pretty impressive numbers for a drive that i believe arrived on the scene um, in mid 2019 and still consistently is a drive of choice for post-production we're going to let that write finish there before we make the switch over to the black magic testing um, after the read but we're still seeing performance there well in excess of what you would expect it from a lot of internal ssds We'll let that finish up there.
and now we can move into the read. Now, as mentioned, the read is going to be consistently faster, and also it's going to be consistently maintained as well. The reason being, that although you will see dips, we aren't creating data on the target drive. What we're doing here is accessing the content of the drive already there. We are reading the data we've already created. The result is that it is always going to be higher for read than write, and that read is still consistently high there. Fantastic to see. So now we're going to move away from AJA and go into Black Magic. With Black Magic, it is a slightly different kettle of fish. The way it conducts its tests, uh, we're going to go ahead with the target drive, and again, we're going to scroll down, find our G drive click select folder and we're going to go should have mentioned a one gig test file so again one gig test file we're going to let it do its job straight away consistent right hitting 1750 immediately bear in mind blank magic does a, a far more video centric test and for those guys out there that are looking at video editing over 4 or 8k this is where there's going to be a distinct difference there between them but we're still getting nice high numbers there for a busy, busy drive at one gig. I'm going to let that finish up there. And I know a number of you are thinking this is still lower than the reported 2,800 megabytes per second. But you have to bear in mind that that is an ideal scenario. And what we are running is what I would like to consider more mainstream access. So we're going to stop that one gig test file there. Let the thing stop. Wait for it to reopen and then go straight into a heavy 5 gig test file. After this, we will be doing a Windows drag and drop uh, performance test there. But even at 5 gig, we're still getting nice consistent high speeds there. But of course, the read is out doing the right in every single way. We're not seeing the XS2000 that we saw before. But a lot of that is because of the difference between AJA and Blackmagic's own bench testing there between the two of them so we're going to stop there and from here we're going to make our way into a standard windows performance test so again we've got a pile of wmv files i've created for youtube there we're just going to grab a pile of them there these are old ones that were still work in progress i'm going to go to properties we've got a simple 13 gig of data there nice and easy i'm going to copy that open up the g drive and just copy it straight on in and again, we're seeing the performance benchmarks there, but unfortunately we are going to see the limitations of my own internal um, uh, drive un along the way. But it's still fantastically high for these large block files to be carried over. So just remember that this is not representative of general editing there on the drive directly. This is you, in, unfortunately, the bottleneck of my internal drive is making all the difference. I like it and I'm looking forward to doing the performance testing from it. This is just an unboxing video, so we can't go into too much detail here. But do check out my performance review of this coming very, very soon. And of course, we will be cracking on with a screwdriver onto this to see exactly what we get inside this drive. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Like if you did, and do stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a very long, and I'm really sorry, it's going to be super dull for some of you, comparison of external drives coming very, very soon. Not only history and legacy stuff like that but moreover looking at the current top choices for business class usb storage whether it's for on the fly editing or just as localized backup to figure out which drive is the best one to buy in 2021 stay tuned for that but otherwise thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time